I'm Bob Miller, Color Services Manager here at IT Supplies, and today we are going to talk about a powerful tool that often goes unnoticed when first setting up your large format Canon printer. The tool is called the Canon Media Configuration Tool, and it is critical for you to know about this tool when setting up third-party medias. Let's take a look. Canon's media configuration software is the one tool that you need to check out if you are planning to use new or third-party medias. Let's hop onto the software and take a look. Here I've gone ahead and the first thing that you need to do is you need to make sure that you are connected on the network to your printer and that the printer is on. Once you have that connection, you can go ahead and load the media, Canon Media Configuration Tool, which I have done here. When you load this software, you're going to see the different paper categories. You're going to see your plane, your coded, your photo papers, and you're going to notice that Canon has gone ahead and they've preloaded the common medias that they sell. This is great news. This is also the moment and the reminder that Canon does have a common calibration that they ask you to set up when you first get your printer. That common calibration, generally, it's suggested that you use a Canon Glossy Media for that. That will then set the calibration and internally so that it will reflect all of these different medias following that common calibration. So please go ahead and take care of the Canon Common Calibration before you even start doing any of this that I'm going to talk about going forward. So once that Common Calibration is done, now let's say you want to set up a third-party media. Hanemule does offer media configurations and profiles for many of the Canon printers we're discussing. If you do find the Hanemule profile, you can go to this first button where it says add and update media information and you can click on that. Here you have an import button and you can go ahead and import the media configuration that you've downloaded from Hanemule's website. But let's say that you have a new printer, Hanemule perhaps hasn't loaded this particular media on their website yet, but you want to get going right away. Well, that's what we're going to focus on. It's a custom paper type. So in this case, we're going to go back and we're going to just, we're going to name, we're going to create a new custom media and I am going to base it off of a Canon media because we already know what the Canon configurations are. First thing you need to think about when you're doing this is, okay, what is the thickness and what are the inks that we're going to be using? So. Um, so let's just, in this particular case, I'm going to want to use the photo black inks, which you can now see in the screen. Um, and I know that the, the paper is a glossy photo 240, let's say. So um, it is a 240 gram and it's a glossy photo paper. So that's what I'm going to use as my basis. So I've selected this Canon Glossy Photo 240 it will automatically use the photo black inks. Now I can create the name and let's just go ahead and we'll name it uh, third party glossy photo 240. And um, on the printer, I'm going to do the same thing. So when we see it, uh, so a third party Okay, so you've got the printer on the first, what you'll see on the panel, and what you'll see in the driver in the second column. So now we're gonna go ahead and click next. And of course, I made it too long, so we will just drop the word paper here. So we'll hit next. All right, so the next up, it's asking what printer do we want to put it on? I am selecting, in this case, the brand new Pro 4600 printer. Um, and I'm going to tell it to go ahead and update that media. So once you've gone ahead and added the Canon media, the next thing it's going to prompt you for is 
to uh, edit that particular media information. So we're gonna go ahead and click yes, and I'm gonna walk you through some of these settings. So when the dialog box pops up, the first thing you're gonna see is the paper feed adjustment. To be honest, we're going to do uh, a custom calibration for this particular media. So if we're gonna do that, I can skip over the paper feed adjustment at this time and we can do that. It'll be done with the calibration. So, um, so we're gonna go to the next tab, which is the advanced printer settings. Here, the very first thing that you'll see is drying time. When you see drying time, you're gonna think, okay, so if the ink is wet or something, uh, you know, I need more drying time. Yes and no. If the, if the ink is wet coming off of the printer, you may need to cut back on your ink levels, which we're going to do in another tab. But assuming that you already have and you need more drying time, this is where you can go about setting that. You also have the automatic cut setting. So on some heavier medias, you may choose not to wear out your blade. So if it's a heavy canvas or vinyl or something, you may choose to cut it manually. This is critical here. So Canon tries to estimate how much media you actually have on the roll. Um, and so it looks at a few things. One, what is the core size? This is very important. Um, and two, what is the paper core's outer diameter? So if you have calipers or you can measure that, that will be critical in the estimation of how much media is on the particular roll. So you wanna enter that in millimeters right here. Uh, the next thing, of course, is the paper length on uh, the roll. And then finally, the paper thickness. Now, one thing that you'll notice is that it's set up for microns, but um, this is really important. You do wanna put in, if you have like um, the, the mills, uh, you'll wanna go ahead and put that in here. So. Um, if you, usually you don't have microns, but you will have mills. So go ahead and enter that paper thickness in here. Again, that will also go toward estimating how much paper you have left on the roll. If we go into the detailed settings, um, we have the drying time between scans. Usually you can leave this. Um, dust reduction, uh, you know, uh, the tension. Tension is something that you do want to kind of pay attention to. If you're using a scrim or adhesive matte vinyl um, or things that might have a slippery back uh, to it, you may want to be adjusting this particular roll paper tension. But normally you want to just leave it at standard. Um, the other thing that we want to talk about here is the leading edge cut length. So a lot of people don't like paper waste. And a lot of times, if you're using a paper media, you can drop this down to 10 or 20 millimeters. However, and especially I should say, on the new Pro Series printers, you can do that. Um, however, if you drop it down that far and you're using a thicker media, the cutter may jam. So you may need more media um, in order to prevent the cutter from jamming. So also on some of their CAD printers, they have a longer lip. And if you cut a too small amount of paper, it will not fall into the catch basket automatically and might remain inside the printer. So you wanna pay attention to this when you're doing that. Okay, so the next tab that we have is the ink usage. Now, we're gonna show on the screen here uh, some of the ink usage uh, tests that we have run in our system. But if I go ahead and click on the print the test chart, I'll have options. And in this case, what you're seeing in our screenshot here is I've gone ahead and printed test charts for medium high, standard, medium small, and small. Usually for ink usage, you don't wanna go with the largest uh, it just tends to be too much ink overall. Um, so, and then we're gonna go ahead and we print that and that's what you're seeing on your screen. Uh, while you're looking at this test chart, you wanna look in particular on the left, you wanna look at the saturation and you wanna look at where the black 
actually starts to invade the color. So if you look at this chart on the left side in the box, you're going to see uh, cyan fading to black at the bottom there. A little bit uh, earlier when you do the medium large amount of ink versus the standard amount of ink. So if you're looking for saturation, um, but also trying to get detail, in this case, I would probably stick to the standard uh, ink usage. Additionally, you want to look to the right of that and you want to look at these text columns and you want to look at the fine text and see if the text is printing properly. And to the right of that is a column that's designed to see if inks are bleeding into one another. You want to take a look at that and if you see fuzzy points in the bleeds between colors, you want to pull back on your ink usage there. So that's how you read this chart. So hopefully that's helpful. Um, <clears throat> the next thing on our screen as we jump back is the paper thickness and the head height. Um, normally you will leave this to auto and the transport unit vacuum strength. You can go ahead and leave that to auto as well. So um, I really wouldn't make too many adjustments here. The only exception would be on particular media and let's just say you're using Canon wrapping paper or something like that where it's super thin and has a tendency to maybe um, when it gets wet to, to, uh, to actually bubble a little bit. Uh, in those particular instances, you can actually go ahead and uh, you can actually up the vacuum strength and you can, uh, you can raise the head height just a little. So uh, let's jump to the next screen. This is gonna be our calibration target. This is automatic for the system. We've gone ahead and printed a calibration target that you can now see on your screen. Um, the system will print this target and it will read this target and it will do that line feed adjustment at the same time. It will be reading the densities of the inks and it will be setting a calibration target. You'll have an option when you're done potentially to choose a a common calibration or a unique calibration. If you're doing a unique third-party media, leave that as a unique calibration. That calibration will then only apply to the media that you're creating at that moment. So you wanna go ahead and do that. Um, and then finally, the last tab that we have here is the ICC profile tab. So if you built an ICC profile separately or you've imported it from Hanamule, um, if it's not here populated already, go ahead and load that and make sure it's in here. The nice thing about this is when you tell the printer to manage your color or you load from a USB stick and you're using this, the media profile will be applied to what you're printing. Once you're done, you're done. So we can now go ahead and we can click update and uh, it will just remind us uh, about the media feed adjustment and other things. We can just go ahead and click yes. It will connect to the printer. You will hit start and uh, it will ask if you want to go ahead and update. And from this point forward, it will go ahead and update your printer. The nice thing is also if you put a profile here, it will load that profile into the correct folder on your computer as well so that it'll be accessible through Photoshop and other means. I hope our viewers take the time to like, comment, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. When it comes to printing and color management, IT Supplies is here to help your business succeed.